Alrighty, what's going on my powerful people? We are back again with another video and in this video we're going to go over some new rules for USA Powerlifting, USAPL. I've done a video before where I went over their major changes. I went over five different points so you can use the link down in the description below or I'll put the card above where you can go watch that if you haven't watched it yet. But make sure you check out this one first all the way through so I get my watch time and then go watch that one as well. So this one we're going to go over two new rule changes that they made at their NGB meeting. That is the National Governing Board meeting. It's where people can submit amendments to either bylaws or the rule book, and then it's discussed and voted on by those that can vote. And we're not going to go into too much details about you know who gets to vote and those kind of things, but the two major changes are the head when it comes to the bench press and then the restrictions or lack of restrictions now when it comes to belts. So first up, let's go over the head rule now when it comes to bench press. Previously in USAPL, you had to keep your head down on the bench and maintain it the whole time from when you got the start command through the press command and into the rack command. Now they got rid of that rule. So some of the reasoning behind it is that referees already have to see so many things, whether you're a chief referee or a side referee, you have to be looking at like grip width, you have to be looking at elbows, you have to be looking at head, butt, the feet, you have to be looking at the chest for the press command as if you're the chief referee. You have to be listening to see if they jump the commands if you're the side referee. So there's lots of things to look at, plus all the things like downward motion or suicide grip and all those other kind of things. And then also depending where you're situated as a side referee, as possible with the spotters or the plates or something gets in the way and blocks your view. Because then if you try and set up where you can see the head, then it's possible that you're blocked as far as the view is seeing the butt. So it's like, you know, give and take, which one do you want to look at? So oftentimes a lot of side referees set up where they can see the butt and the feet and they may miss out on the head sometimes. So this gets rid of that. The referees don't don't have to worry about that anymore and when it comes to the raw side it doesn't really change anything no one's max is going to shoot up from being able to lift their head up on the bench when it comes to the raw side for the quip side it's a little bit different because now there may be changes in how tight of a shirt some person uses because now they can lift their head up in order to touch more easily and then drive their head back down in order to press so there may be some changes there on the equip side but for the raw side which most people watching my videos are probably more on the raw side it doesn't really have an effect so now as a lifter doesn't matter whether you keep your head up the entire time whether you keep your head down the entire time or whether you move it up or down during the lift. And then on top of that, since the head doesn't matter whether it's up or down, you can do whatever with your hair now because whether you have it in a bun and your head's off the bench or whether you have your hair down, it's blocking the view, it doesn't matter because it's no longer a rule. And one of the other benefits to this is for people who compete in various federations and maybe they compete in other federations that already have this rule where the head doesn't matter and then they've been trying to come to USAPL and you have to like change how you're benching and focus on keeping your head down, now it's more even. So now whether you're going to USAPL or USPA or some other fed where you can lift your head up, you don't have to worry about it as more so now it's a little bit more consistent or easy for lifters to bounce around between federations and not have to worry about as many rules that are different between the federations. All right, and then the second rule change is going to come to the specifications or rules when it comes around to belts. And so they're easing up the restrictions and getting rid of a lot of the specifications, except for the width of the belt. So now that width of the belt stays the same as far as 10 centimeters, which comes out to about four inches. But now the other things don't matter. So some of the other things that may have caused trouble for people in the past is maybe the type of belt if it has like velcro like a bodybuilding belt or if it has some kind of padding in the back like again like a bodybuilding belt those at local meets were not allowed or maybe a meet director was nice and said okay you're allowed to use it this one time on squat and on deadlift but in the future you can't use it and also normally there's a restriction to the thickness of the belt and some people went with 10 millimeters or 13 millimeters because those are like the two standard sizes when it comes to major belt manufacturers but now that's gone as well so now you can go with whatever thickness you want if you want to go with a thinner a bodybuilding belt that was always allowed but now if a company happens to make a thicker belt or they're going to in the future now with these rule changes now a lifter can use it so really the only thing you need to focus on now when you're picking your belt for a usapl meet is that width of 10 centimeters and then of course they still have their logo policy so you just want to make sure if you have certain things on your belt written or stuck on there and that it just meets that policy as well and this also is like another benefit where it's going to be consistent across different federations where if you compete in other federations where there is no approved list like an ipf approval list or any approval list at all you don't have to worry about the brand of the belt and then now also you don't have to worry about the type of the belt, whether it's a lever belt or a prong belt, a ratchet belt, a Velcro belt, any of those kind of things, as long as that width is not greater than that 10 centimeter uh, restriction, which in a lot of federations is going to be a similar restriction. So again, it makes it a little more consistent across all the federations. If a lifter is bouncing around between USAPL, USPA, RPS, wherever else, it's going to be a little bit easier for them to bounce around without having to worry about, okay, is my belt allowed in this federation, but not allowed in that federation? I got to get a different belt and those kind of things. 
and also helps for a lot of the new lifters that come in because for me i've been to so many local competitions where people just come with the wrong belt and it's not that the belt is going to give them any kind of advantage if anything their belt is very flimsy not going to help at all maybe very little if anything but it's still not allowed by the rules so those type of bodybuilding belts with a little padding in the back that are very flimsy or a velcro belt again that's very thin and flimsy is not going to really add anything but according to rules they weren't allowed and we had to tell people hey are you able to lift without this belt because it's not allowed now you don't have to worry about it now you can just pass through all those belts and let the person have a good experience for their first meet make that barrier to entry a little bit easier for people to get in and then as they develop as a power lifter and may want to move up to high level meets and want to get more serious then maybe they'll spend the money and get a better belt and the only possible downside to this could be like i said maybe there are some belt manufacturers out there that already make thicker belts if they don't maybe some will do it because usapl is a big federation one of the biggest in the us and so maybe there is some money to be made there but then if someone does get a thicker belt like a 15 millimeter belt or a 17 millimeter belt let's say they're like a super heavyweight they want something that's a little bit more supportive then in that case they have to worry about it if they go to another federation and the other federation has a limit of 13 millimeters then they're not gonna be able to use that belt so that could be one potential downside especially if anyone who wants to transition from like usapl over to the new federation power of the american to go to the IPF. The IPF still has their IPF approved list and they still have the 13 millimeter restriction. They still have the restrictions on like no Velcro, uh, uh, no padding on the belt and those kind of things. And so now if someone wants to transition to that federation, it's gonna be a little more difficult. But as far as the other federations like USPA, RPS, WRPF, it seems like it's gonna be easier now for people to transition when it comes to the belt as well as when it comes to the head rule. But I wanna hear your guys' thoughts as well. So be sure to leave a comment below. What do you think about the head rule? Do you think it's gonna be beneficial? Do you think it's gonna be a bunch of raw lifters lifting head up or is it going to be just some people who maybe have mobility issues as well as the equip lifters to try and get a little more out of the shirt and also let me know your thoughts on the belt are you going to go and get a different belt now that the restrictions are very wide open you can basically get anything as long as within that 10 centimeters or are you fine with the belt that you do have and you're fine with using a 10 millimeter or 13 millimeter thickness and you think it's not going to be a big change i want to hear what you guys think drop those comments down below and i'll catch you guys in that next video